I think the book that we were saying before and is going to help, is going to be like an enclosure, something that's going to protect us the next two days, <coughs> the, the, the book of Obrist. And uh, it's a book that speaks a lot about the concept of time. And I like it to, to make you remember um, that this argument is in this moment very, very important for me. I think they are one, two years that we began an exhibition in Triennale. It should be a little exhibition, it should be not a work so impressive for myself, but it's been um, a big lesson. The concept was uh, to, to do as an architect the, the, the display for an, um, an exhibition about time. The name was O'Clock. The name was another one. As time goes on, and I, I didn't like, I'd make them change to O'Clock. Then I, I was more and more, in the year we were preparing the, the exhibition, I was more and more involved. Then I, I was giving a lot of, this, I was doing a lot of discussions with the curators, and it was very interesting. Um, O'Clock had two entrances. One was a kind of hole, even done in a, in a lame way, not interesting, but was a real hole. And then there was another, another hole that was a fast track. You know, I, I live in airports, and, but perhaps you don't live as much as me, I hope for you. But I, you know, the concept of fast track is very emblematic in the life we are living now. And uh, you know, when you see a fast track, you say, I can, I go. I, come on, you go, you are in a museum, there is an exhibition, take your own fast track. If you go on the fast track, possibly you will go out quick, and perhaps you will not see the exhibition. But um, it was a, a little trap to make things understand about time. All the journalists, the first day, part of them, they were saying, we had the first day, the fast track, like a fast track, and they had a panoramic of the exhibition, but they couldn't get inside, because they were always isolated, but you know this little element uh, that you can, the strap, you have that divide you, the correct, and many of them, they were open, it was done like, open it, go into the other side. Then I, I wanted to understand how we have to, to think, which are your own fast tracks? Like, obviously they are interesting, the, the use of time, and to put together the personal time and the collective time is one of the most important um, arguments in a society of communication, and in and the society we are living, but, you have to understand which are your own fast track. I'm, I'm taking a little bit the structure of the book. Perhaps I'm gonna be running in some chapters just to make you understand how I put together when I did a moment, when, when I decided to understand what about the work we have done in the last 10, 12 years. And we decided that we'll be not in a chronological way. Because for me, chron I don't have a kind of chronology in the way I think about my personal and my professional life. I, there are always things that I connect, which are from different periods, and the, there is no my way of thinking. That is something that I understood. For example, there are elements which are projects that they are connected with the concept of circle line. That for me, they are, for example, I had a, um, um, a kind of chair in wood, you know, the typical old chair that normally you find in a rustic way, like in America, in every, in every barn you go, in every um, rustic space you find them, or in, in, in Scandinavia, or in places, still being a kind of um, chair that it was not anymore connected with, with the concept of um, innovation, and uh, we reproduce it in, in plastic, it's a few years ago. Uh, there is a lot of research, I think, in, in young people in this moment about this kind of new roots and things which are circular, no? that we, they, are, they have no time in some way. It was a project that I liked with Cartel, and I enjoyed doing it. Or, for example, this is there's a little drawing of my daughter. This is a chair which is my Scandinavia attitude thing that I went many times, I was two days ago in Denmark, is a place that I come back and I need it. I was in the SAS Royal Hotel, in, I had the luck to be in a high room, we changed the room to an upper one, then you see all the city of Copenhagen, and uh, it's little, they are tiny rooms, but they are and still being from Jacobsen, part of them. Then to, I need, you know, to come back to certain things, to, 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 to understand, to understand, you don't know, you feel and you understand. Or, for example, the idea of Capitone. This is a work done with Moroso. And um, I was in that period, this 
four or five years ago. I was interested on the, the for me, the Capitone is the, the most artisan uh, way of doing um, a qualified sitting. But this absolutely mm, overlapped by everything. It's not any more interesting because you always come back to this, you know, you have to put all this. Uh, and I said, we are going to do like a Montclair. We are going to do with some, uh, you know, with some bottoms and we are going to do a kind of, the physical project will be as a very classical, but it's going to be done in a very easy way, like a jacket. And we did it. Like, it's not important to tell more, but it's important what I wanted. Or oh, this project is another history. I went to a company, Italiana. They called me to do a very, very simplified wire chair. And I had a project. The project was very simplified, and I wanted, I was really intended to do a real work like this. But I arrived to visit the company. It's quite nearby Rome, it's so between Perugia, but Conque. It's a bit far away. And I remember I was a little bit sick after this car travel. And when I'm sick, I'm, I'm, I'm quite dangerous because I change everything. And I, <clears throat> I arrived there, and they, they had um, in a room all chairs that they did in the 50s. And they were all, you know, those <coughs> chairs in a wire, very, that they had another mood. They said, what I'm doing with this idea of a sample chair? Your history is another one. Why you, and they saw a robot, that they had a very good new technology, that they were using the wrong way, at my, at my advice. Then I, I said to them, no, we are gonna change. We are gonna do, with the robot you have here, we are gonna do a kind of losange, we are gonna close it, and then we're gonna repeat it, and I did it in, in digital way, and then we are gonna put all together, it's gonna look like a deja vu old chair. Then, why not? These crossovers of argument, I like. That, that, that element was a project that would keep it in my mind for one year or, or a little more. Sometimes you have some, some arguments that they keep upset, uh, as an obsession in your mind. And uh, I did a, a project for the city for lighting for Christmas time that should be Comunque Electronical, and they said to me Electronical, then no, there was no electronic, then the lamps, they were fixed with only light, and then I, I wanted to kill someone, but it's not important. They go, at the end, some projects, they, they don't give you even half of what you, you could get, like a bit of, but we did with Alessi little, little items. Then it was an history that, that was on my mind for a period, I go. Um, or oh, this, for example, is another typology as the one I was saying to you, all chairs from my tradition, from my roots, that they keep there. I like, I had this project, the, the, that drawing from the beginning, and was on. I connect that image with this one, which is our hotel in Berlin, where I have to do um, the public spaces especially. And um, it was in the old uh, Danish embassy, in a building uh, done in a period very strange uh, uh, before the war, the Second World War, complicated um, history of the building then with a lot of historical uh, arguments inside. And then they asked me uh, that there was a chef, very sophisticated, and they wanted two restaurants. One should be the, the high-level restaurant. And he put the breakfast and the, the low-profile uh, restaurant in the best place of the hotel, where there was daylight, and the place that I think you need in the morning, then when you are, and perhaps you don't have the money because you're sleeping in that hotel, but you are, don't want to go to the, the sophisticated restaurant. And I put the restaurant, the place where you have to spend more money, in the, nearby the kitchen, in the worst space of the, of the hotel. And I said to them, me, I want that people, if you are doing, you are cooking so well, I want that they focus on the kitchen. Then that space is really, they were saying to me, we discuss a lot. Uh, why is yes, why not, why yes, we did it. Then the, the, the restaurant is connected with the kitchen, and I like it a lot, that thing. And it's not in the, in the, in the classical place. Many times after a big project, what I keep in mind is some little wars that I win it, no? That's, I think, as all the projectistas, they, they are a few things that they were so difficult to get, but they were so clear in your mind that uh, at the end, after years, is the only thing that you, you keep nearby you. That is a little drawing of uh, something that we began with Bofi, this qualified kitchen company. Um, we are doing bigger, today I have to go now to Bofi because they are doing now finally the, the, the containers, all the elements of the, the 
of the of the system but uh, they are doing big kitchens and uh, in my mind the kitchen was very little and then i i keep very calm but i think the system they have to live for a long time bit by bit i'm gonna make them do them smaller a capito then is there are many long histories with the companies or for example this bathtub i had it in my mind i was doing a hotel in a, in Caraibi, a place where you live with flip flops and, and where you live with sand and you are distressed. And they were asking me, um, no, no, but in the suites, in the room, you have to put, you know, bathtub, important, even with bubbles, even. I answer, oh, come on, I can be I know bubbles, no nothing. We are going to do a bathtub, a tin. And they were saying, a tin? Ah, yes, a tin. We are going to do a tin, no, a tin, yes, a tin. At the end, Agape, which is a, a very qualified company of Italia, he, the, the, he's a good friend of me, Benedini, and he said to me, oh, yes, benissimo, I can do it for you, because no one, even in, in Puerto Rico, didn't want to produce, even the Chinese didn't want to produce, Echo, because the company, we were using items for many things. When you do a hotel, it's a conversation in many directions. Nobody wanted to do the tin. Echo, Benedini did it. We call it Vieques, like the hotel, and it's a product of design that is having a long life by his own. That means, you know, life is complex, Echo, to understand. Craft time is another chapter where obviously there are many people that they put me the label, you know, the craft, the craft of girl, you know. I'm not really, I was a little bit afraid about those labels a few years ago. I'm not anymore. I think, uh, put me labels, not, no problem. I, I think the path in your life, you do it by your own. And the others, they observe you and they get opinions and they do I like. I don't like, you know. We, we are the generation of likes. They, we don't vote anymore. I think that was something interesting in the book. Possibly how we are going to do in a, in a generation where I like is more important than I vote. You have to think about. Then I go with the I like and not like. And there are people that possibly they read from me. They only like it or they were connecting with me only the crafted word. Then they get that from me. It's a problem. It's their problem. It's not mine. But that thing was interesting because I was pregnant of uh, Sophia. Sophia has nine years old now. And that was Hela Jungerius that had a, a baby in that period. Then was quite 10 years ago, nine, see, 10 years ago. And they asked both, I think Hela Jungerius is a, a woman fantastic, doing a fantastic, tough work in, in this, for my generation. And um, we have very, very different, obviously, attitudes. But uh, they put us together to do for Ideal House in Cologne. A moment that they were doing this exhibition, very interesting in January in, in Cologne. And uh, we had to do always an Ideal House. My Ideal House, I, I, I didn't know, but I did, no, no, no. I'm gonna do an scaffolding, I'm gonna rent it. I'm gonna put the, the fabric of the, the plastic um, net they use in the scaffolders in the city, and I'm gonna do a big embroidery out of a scale. I call my even males because they have to go in, in high stairs. And the, the girls, that sometimes they were afraid. And I, I was seeing part of the, my, my big boys working in doing this uh, uh, Moer uh, works on the, on, the, on the net, and remember that thing with a lot of fun. And uh, we were doing all um, industrial pieces Half of them, they were in half of the process, and they were finished with fabrics that they were really, really artisan. Then my, my, possibly my manifesto was that possibly there will be one of the things I was thinking in that period. There will be a crossover between what is the industrial roots of design and the artisan roots of design. Why those words they could the craft? and the industrial attitude. Why don't make them cross in my mind? And you know, I had many friends come in there, industrial designers, interesting ones, and they would say, we don't understand. For example, this product was my first project of uh, crafting, and, and, but the project, I think, is a mix of an industrial piece and a crafted piece. And uh, that period, I, I think I, I, I did a lot of work in that direction because for me it was an exercise to purify comunque, my love for molds, you know? Then I'm, 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 I'm you know, my god, when, you know, or the, I don't know if it's a god or a goddess, but the molds, they, they have this power on, because they, they represent from an idea to get a, a theory, you know? And for us designers, it's, it's um, something that is one of our goals. And 
Artigian, no, is completely the contrary. And I like it to have this. I like it, Gillo Dorfles, that was comunque visiting the salon in that period, and he loved my chair, even did a photo, super happy, and he's now 105 years. He's going to be this year, I think. <sighs> Interesting age. Um, this was another work in that period. I, um, b and &B company, they understood I had this file in my mind. And they said to me, wow, we go to Filipinas and we do... Um, but they asked me, you know, after Salone, in this period, for September, they had two collections they wanted of items done in Filipinas. I said, well, it's not the way to do a process. I, if you want like this, I go and I do a, 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 a kind of workshop. I go there. When I'm, with my husband, I work and I live with my husband, Alberto. We went there in Filipinas. I don't say you in summertime how hot was Filipinas. And uh, there was an, an office, little office with, with air conditioner, where normally the architects from America, they arrive and they sit there. And they give all the advices and all the company does the prototypes. And um, me, I said, no, 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 I am, I am working with them. Then we work it all together. All together, I did a lot of mess. We created even a scenario, because I was saying, if we do things in one week, we need a place to display the things in the night, you know, you know, like the little um, histories, you know, that the, I, I like to, to, to create comunque. And then we were all very proud about this. So we did a lot of work. Obviously, that work for me was interesting because I was doing a work, a hotel in, in uh, Singapore, and that is in construction, still being. And uh, me, I was putting my items, because many times they have needs from architecture, give me the value to do things in design, or, or, or the contrary. Um, this is, a, for example, the canasta, the, 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 the big potato you see there. Was, I was doing in that moment the one of Caraibi, because it was all together, and uh, I needed a seat. And that's the first prototype went to the hotel. And then b and believe it, and then this one they didn't want to produce when I was in Filipinas. And when I did them for the hotel, they decided to produce them. I call them. And it's the one of the, co the collection that they sell the most. Then there's nothing written on the paper, you know, nothing. That's another history. I call Pirelli. Cavi uh, Pirelli asked me to do um, a window for Salone del Mobile because they were opening a shop in the city. Just this little history. I did a lot of research because I have this, you know, this string. I hear here, yes. I have this string, and I was doing with this, um, I, I was Pirelli. My mind was a Pirelli mind, and then they said to me, no, no, we cannot open the shop, then we don't need you, thank you very much, in a very gentle way, but they stopped me. And I said, okay, I couldn't stop, like, because you can't stop, because you have already that thing running in your mind. Then I, I went to Patricia Moroso, when I, when I have a problem, I <laughs> it's one of my friends. Then I, I said, Patricia, we have to do something with this rope because I have this, oh, this out of scale rope. And we, we work on this item that I like a lot. It's an item that I represent a lot, something that was in my mind and came very sincere. Uh, did, we did the rope in, in, a, in a technical material for outdoor with the inside is a pet um, done with uh, a recycled material. Then there is a nice history in the back. All these is another thing that was, you know, I was working with uh, a company that I grow, the relation grow a lot in the last years. Is Ketal, is a Spanish company that I was completely um, disaccord. I was all the time saying at the beginning to them, what? Well, it's a problem here, the catalogs is a disaster, the way that you communicate, you don't get relation with the right designers, you are not doing, you have a, they were producing in China, and they were saying you have to mix more your production in Italia. Well, they changed in the last five years, the way they have the graphic, they are doing a very interesting work, they are working with very nice people, and they are doing a much more mixed production with, the, with uh, Spain. Then, it's a company that I'm very proud about the way they grow and how our, co I'm more proud about the relation and how the, they grow uh, in the relation of my discussions than about my work. Me, I'm part of it. Those projects that are connected with this, they call me from Murano to do for uh, Biennale di Venezia um, a, a project with a master, uh, uh, Andrea, like one of the youngest and most uh, intelligent in Murano. They are just a few people. They are losing completely all the energies in that part of, of um, Italia. And um, you have only six matinees, because it's very expensive, the time of the maestro. You have to work in the morning from seven in the morning, because they open the fire very early. And you have to stop at one. And you have to do bases for this Biennale. I never work it in glass. Then, you know, 
you can't be so ignorant. Then I, I, this was the time I was thinking the most, how can I do that? I study a little bit, I was thinking all the in calmo, all the technical for doing. But when I arrived there, no way to use anything because Andrea was a crazy man working with fire. Then his mind was not coming so dialoguing. Then I found a way, drawing in the floor things. Then Andrea was taking dimensions for the floor, and he was doing like, it was like jazz, you know, instant work. Then I began in a very fresh way doing those animals, were like, a, you know, like a laboratory where all the all lost uh, uh, glasses, they became animals, things happened. It was very wild, the work. But at the end, the last vase was the other one you see there, which was um, Andrea, when he was speaking with me, these six matinees, he always had in his hand two um, black elements like this. He was putting them in water, and then he was saying, Patricia, what I do? I do it, this, do it this or thinner. Then he was tuck, tuck, putting in water and doing like this. And this, these were the hands the translate hands of Andrea. Then I did a vase the last day with, with, the, with Andrea hands. It was a, a tribute to, to him, and it's the vase that I, I love, because the one that represents all the work I've done there. This is a time machine done for the exhibition of time, the o'clock exhibition I said to you in Triennale. That then we, we sent it to Beijing. Now it's gonna be to, we're gonna go, I think, to America. And uh, we did in 15 days. It's another work that we have done in very short time. I, I like those works that you do in, you say, we have 15 days, like a quarantine of 40 days that you have to isolate yourself. We had 15 days of, uh, of, um, of time. And then we went and we put together pieces, same, um, which are in the middle of a process, and we created uh, that kind of uh, a crazy machine. And uh, it was a kind of time machine. Time machine is the only machine that is still not working. It's the only one we have that doesn't work. And uh, they, only in the mythology of the, you know, uh, films of the 70s and 60s. And you know, the time machine from the, the uh, possibly the time bokan, the Japanese, they worked a lot in time bokan, in these machines. And, and it was like a fly and a stupid, possibly stupid, because she's still, she's not a stupid. She's still needing a help, the time machine then why not to, to, to work on her? Then we put all together these pieces. We, I obliged a company, Moroso, to not work for production, to work for something that we didn't know even what could be. This is an exercise very interesting. If you get collection with a company and you get some real collection, work always in a direction to give them product and make them always break other limits, you know. That is very important. It's you that you have to do it. It's, I think uh, it's very important we understand the power of uh, being outside the companies. We are very individualistic designers, but we are perhaps the creative people that we are more intended to get in relation with others. Because we need the industry many times, or we need the artisans, we need a collectivity that has to dialogue with us. I think it's very important that we understand how many different dialogues we can create. Or, for example, in, uh, in marble, there was the earthquake in, in Italia, a real one, an analogical one. And my company, Budri, um, she knew from two years that we were already working together that I was quite an open mind person in relation with the company. And I was always saying, I don't want to work with the best marbles you have. I'm not in trend. I use the, the, um, the B side of your marbles, the one that you don't use with your rich clients. And then she, she called me the day she had the disaster in the company. She said, everything is broken, but I know you will use them. You will know the way to reuse all these broken things. And it's truth. We did a, um, a big um, surfaces working with all pieces, all together, any kind of marble. All things break it and we reuse it for doing many things and uh, from that day we are doing a lot of work bases things working with the uh, little the, the things that all the waste or any broke or little things we use for example even sometimes pieces of marble which are the end of, a, of the material and we add some resins and we create a very nice uh, connection between materials that it became artistic and fantastic then I'm, I'm re-educated, I think, the company to quality can be quality in many ways. Not only can you use the best part of the best material, which is a very ridiculous way of thinking about quality.